Hi, and welcome to Geothermal University. I'm John Pendleton. Today we're going to discuss air coils. Manufacturers in the HVAC industry use many different types of coils. There's flat coils, slab coils, and A coils. Materials will vary as well, such as all aluminum coils and copper tube aluminum fin. Coil reliability in recent years has been somewhat questionable. In this video, we're going to show the technician how to leak check a coil. Let's get started. Before we begin, we'd like to discuss the corrosion that an air coil is subject to when installed in HVAC equipment. We'll briefly define the three kinds of corrosion present in HVAC equipment. Galvanic corrosion is an electrochemical process in which one metal corrodes preferentially to another when both metals are in electrical contact. Crevice corrosion refers to corrosion that naturally occurs in tight mechanical bonded junctions, such as where aluminum fins are pressed into copper tubes. The spaces between the dissimilar metals are referred to as crevices. Electrolytes are drawn to a crevice through capillary action. Formicary corrosion only occurs in copper-based alloys and HVAC coils made of copper. If you see corrosion, it is probably not formicary corrosion because it is not generally visible without magnification. Other nicknames for formicary corrosion are pinhole or champagne leaks due to the micro size of the actual holes in the copper. As a general statement, corrosion is not usually the cause of leaks in newer HVAC equipment unless the environment is very harsh. If faced with an application where a coil will be installed in a harsh environment, a call to the manufacturer about the application is recommended. Before we discuss leak detection, we'll first describe several classifications of leaks typically found in the HVAC industry. Standing leaks, which are leaks that can be detected while the unit is at rest and fully equalized. Standing leaks are the most common of all. There's pressure dependent leaks, which are leaks that can only be detected as the pressure is built. Nitrin is used to pressurize a system up to 400 PSI. Never use CO2 or oxygen. Helium will also work. Pressure dependent leak testing should be conducted if no leaks are discovered by the standing test. Temperature dependent leaks are leaks associated with the heat of expansion. Temperature dependent leaks usually occur from high ambient air, condenser blockage, or during defrost. Vibration dependent leaks occur only during unit operation. The mechanical strain of the motion, rotation, refrigerant flow, or valve actuation are all associated with vibration dependent leaks. Cumulative micro leaks are individual leaks that are too small to detect with standard tools. The total loss over many years of operation slightly reduces the initial gas charge. Pinhole or champagne leaks could be classified as micro leaks. Having knowledge of the classifications of leaks helps a technician understand the underlying cause of the leaks and helps him to troubleshoot a leaky unit. We are going to focus our discussion on air coil leak detection. As a general statement, we tend to use the law of averages to begin our leak detection. For example, you wouldn't expect corrosion issues in newer equipment less than three to five years old. Another example, manufacturing defects would likely occur very quickly. A vibration leak could turn up fairly quickly. A corrosion leak would take some time to show up and probably more than five years. Some manufacturers use or are building all aluminum coils. For example, Entertech has built geothermal microchannel coils since 2011. All aluminum coils have an advantage over dissimilar metal coils since it is one metal. Dissimilar metal coils such as copper tube, aluminum fin, are subject to galvanic and crevice corrosion. If you suspect the refrigerant system has a leak, it is important to have a good leak inspection process. In a newer system, the most logical place to look for a leak is a braze joint, mechanical connection, or transition joint. As the system ages, you may begin to check the component's degradation due to corrosion. Standing leaks are usually large leaks that can be detected with the system off. If the system is flat, the technician may be able to leak check with nitrogen only. The system can be pressurized to 400 PSI. It is permissible to add a trace amount of refrigerant along with the nitrogen to perform leak detection. 
If the system is nearly or mostly flat, we do not recommend adding a full charge of refrigerant or topping off the unit since a significant leak is likely present and added refrigerant will need to be recovered. Heating and cooling takes place in the evaporator coil and for this reason some very hostile forces are at work. There are hurricane force erosion winds where the liquid is changed to a gas. In the cooling mode temperatures approach freezing. In the heating mode temperatures approach 120 degrees. In the off cycle temperatures can reach nearly 140 degrees. The result is a thermal cycling gradient of about 100 degrees. Dissimilar metals are used in the construction of many coils. Materials include copper, steel, aluminum, and solder alloy. The result is a slightly corrosive cell. In many cases, coils are installed in harsh environments where high levels of volatile organic compounds speed up the corrosion rate. In summary, you have erosion and thermal cycling along with an electrolytic cell. This combination ultimately leads to coil failure. Our video recommends a systematic method of search using common leak detection tools. These tools include an electronic halogen instrument having a sensitivity of at least half ounce per year, a bubble or foam promoter, an inspection mirror, and a light source. In addition to the above detection tools, Many technicians use fluorescent leak detection. This method requires adding fluorescent dye to the air conditioning or refrigeration system. The dye then mixes with the lubricant and circulates with the refrigerant throughout the system. Wherever refrigerant leaks out, so does the dye. When the system is scanned with an ultraviolet or blue light lamp, the dye glows a bright yellow-green color, pinpointing the location of the leak. Important. Consult with the equipment manufacturer and or compressor manufacturer before injecting any additive into the refrigerant circuit. Many manufacturers do not approve of dye additives. Make sure the specific dye is approved by the equipment manufacturer. The easiest and quickest method of leak detection is the electronic sniffer. That will usually lead the technician to the general area. If the leak is big enough, we can use soap bubbles. There are other leak detection systems available. Since many of the practices induce dye or a liquid tracer, we recommend contacting the equipment manufacturer before using. All refrigeration systems circulate compressor oil internally. Oil will blow off with refrigerant gas and often mark the general areas of leakage. Oil spots appear wet and have a fine coating of dust. Oil spotting is the technician's first quick check but not reliable for the following reasons. Oil is often present at Schrader valves and access ports due to the discharging of refrigerant hose gauges. Often these ports are falsely blamed as the main point of leakage. Oil blotches can originate from motors, pumps, or other sources. Oil residue may be the result of a previous leak, and oil is not always present at every leak site. It may take many months, even years, of unit operation to cause enough oil blow-off to accumulate on the outer side. Because evaporator sections are cabinet-contained or framed into areas that do not allow easy access, evaporator coil leaks are difficult to locate. Experience has taught us to search smart when looking for leaks. For example, you wouldn't expect a leak in a straight section of tubing. A more likely leak would be a braze joint, transition joint, or mechanical fitting. For this reason, you wouldn't typically expect to find a leak in a coil slab. A more likely leak location would be the inlet, outlet, or return bends if equipped. Begin the leak detection process by inspecting all mechanical fittings and braze joints. Inspect any couplers for pressure switches and gauges. Remember, a copper aluminum coil has return bends on the back side of the coil. There are usually a significant number of braze joints on an aluminum copper coil. Peel away any insulation that's covering a joint or connection. Inspect all tubing connections such as equalizer lines and tubing and remember to look for oil or dust buildup. Remember to inspect the Schrader ports. We often overlook leak detecting at the ports because our gauges are connected. You'll want to leak check the ports with the caps off. Leaks are often a symptom of another problem. For example, many leaks result from vibration. 
equalizer lines, process tubes, or refrigerant ports may have been subjected to mechanical vibration. Look for breaks, bends, or tube rubs. If you have followed along and not found the source of the leak, we'll need to examine the evaporator coil more thoroughly. In order to avoid time-consuming labor to strip off covers, ducting, blower cages, or removing the components, an easy electronic screening method is recommended. Turn off all power, including the evaporator fan motor. Make sure the system refrigerant has equalized. Warm up and calibrate an electronic sniffer to its highest sensitivity. Locate the evaporator drain outlet or downstream trap. Position the detector probe at the drain opening, being careful that the probe does not come in contact with any water. Sniff a minimum of 10 minutes or until a leak is sensed. Recalibrate the device and test again. Two consecutive positive tests confirm an evaporator leak. A negative test rules out a detectable evaporator section leak. Refrigerant gas is heavier than air and gravity will cause the gas to flow to the lowest point. If the evaporator section tests positive, we must expose the entire coil and investigate thoroughly. Important, assuming or guessing the coil has a leak is risky. A false positive test can lead to a wrong diagnosis and significant expense. It is important to pinpoint the leak because sometimes a repair is a better option than replace. Depending on the leak rate, a more thorough investigation of the coil slab, distribution circuit, and return bins may be needed. It is helpful to build a maximum pressure inside the evaporator coil. A heat bump evaporator coil will see pressure nearing 400 PSI in heating mode with a full charge. If the unit is operational, disable the evaporator fan and run the unit in heating. If the unit has lost significant refrigerant or is not operational, you can build significant pressure in the coil using dry nitrogen or helium. Pressurize the entire system to about 400 PSI. Important. Refrigerant regulations allow a trace gas of refrigerant to be added along with nitrogen or helium. As we mentioned earlier, we use the law of averages in leak detection. For example, in newer equipment, only a few years old, we wouldn't expect to see leaks caused by corrosion. Corrosion leaks usually happen in equipment much older. If the equipment is newer, perhaps failed on startup, it's likely a solder joint mechanical connection or transition piece. This could have been caused by manufacturing, transportation damage, or vibration. To provide high levels of customer satisfaction, it is important to properly diagnose a leaky system. Every precaution should be taken to ensure the leak or leaks have been found and repaired. Topping off is not legal or recommended. As a last resort, if the coil can be removed from the cabinet, seal the outlet brazen a Schrader port, pressurize the coil with nitrogen to 400 PSI, and dunk the coil in a water tank. Though expensive and time consuming, it is far less costly than misdiagnosis. Some of the corrosion type leaks discussed in this video are very difficult to repair. Before repairing a coil that has failed because of corrosion, we recommend calling tech support for more information. Many coils, such as microchannel, can be repaired. Remember when brazing on a refrigerant system to use a nitrogen flow of 2 to 3 PSI to prevent internal scaling. In summary, please don't forget the following important steps when leak checking. Be methodical and take your time. Multiple leak detection devices may be necessary. Check the whole system, including fusible plugs, brace joints, pressure switches, process tubes, service valve stems, Schrader valves, mechanical fittings, and bimetal transitions, or the aluminum to copper connections. If corrosion is found to be the culprit, multiple leaks are possible. Thanks for watching Geothermal University. I'm John Pendleton.